Hi guys, just waiting for a couple to come in, if anybody does. And also, uh, to check we've got audio and stuff. I've knocked up a bit of a, a temporary setup here because I still haven't got my cameras put up, but there you go. Uh, looks like we are streaming. And just no audio at the moment. Let's see how we can set this up. I want live chat. Uh, how do I do that? Like so, I think. Okay. Looks like possibly. Hey Steve, hi Fix. Hey David. Hi guys. I'm just trying to sort this out so I can see the chat. There's for some reason it's um coming up in the wrong place on the iPad so I can't see it. Uh, what have I got wrong? Oh well, not to worry. Is the audio alright chaps? I assume you can hear it. What this is, it's, it's not going to go too deep into this. Um, it's just really a little bit of a show uh, as to why these things can be potentially lethal. Um, this is a Passfly David sent me, um, Dad will fix it. Uh, it previously, it, uh, I think from what David said, it had been had a bit of a bash and it had broken the 5 volt uh, running transform off here. And it still didn't work, so Dave sent it over to me and uh, we had a live link up last night and I repaired it online with David. I really should have put it on YouTube, but uh, it was too late time I thought about that. And what had also had happened, it had a right old clout, as I say, it also broken all the leads off the 12 volt flyback transformer here, this one. And what I'll try and do is show you, uh, I'm going to be careful here because I've got all this linked up to show you how nasty, well, not so much how nasty 300 volts can be, but just how long it will stay in these capacitors and uh, a way of discharging it safely this is not um, a video intended to show you how to do this it's for information but uh, if you do you do any of this at your own risk <laughs> right so what I'm going to try and do is drag the microscope in and I'll try and get uh, this linked up you're going to have to forgive me because I still haven't got all the uh, cameras set up. So let me just get a, a focus on that top of that. I've got to be careful here because I've got wires going everywhere. I'll try and get this in a position where I can show you what happened. Right. I have three wires there. You can see the two thicker ones on your left and then the thin one on the right. Well, the two middle ones have ripped out the transformer, basically. It looks a little bit messy, but uh, they're well in and they're epoxied as well. So hopefully this will make a lasting repair. The only problem I'm worried about is the fact the anchoring of this transformer to the board has been broken. So it possibly might make, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to be sure if... I'd put this out as a final repair. I'd probably try and get a new transformer and replace it, but uh, either way, it's, uh, it does work now. So, let's get this out of the way and go back to whatever, what we got, that one will do. So, okay, now these things, when they run, the DC or the AC comes in here at the AC point, you have through a fuse, couple of filters and a bridge rectifier here and what that does that changes the AC to full wave DC and that then has to be filtered and uh, I won't go too deep into this but smoothed out basically take out any ripple that's done by these two capacitors here now these are the two little sods that really will do you some serious damage if you uh, say you unplug this board and you got to take it out and you pick it up and put your things underneath if you're lucky, you'll get a lump blown out your fingers. If you're unlucky, it can kill you. And the way we work on these, 
is firstly you make sure that when you've got things set up ideally you want to make sure you've got nothing metal around you no earth that you can touch so that you're safe and when you do power these up I, I power them up using an isolation transformer and what this does it limits the amount of current that you can pull so if there is a problem you do less damage and the other thing it uh, putting a lamp in series with the mains feeding the board is a good idea and if you've got a short the lamp will come on bright and you don't do any more damage but we'll assume that we've repaired the board and now we want to test it now firstly what I'm going to do is power this up and just show you the amount of supply that will build up so I'm going to take across to the meters now on the top right that is reading voltage um, and then what I'm going to do uh, I'll show you how long well you can see how long this will stay charged so I'm just going to power this up for a, a split second I've just got to be in front right there we go 341 volts let's just unplug it right she's unplugged and as I say you can see just how long this will hold this charge and that is still enough to do a lot of serious damage it really is so it's still at 300 volts don't forget sort of 175 volts 50 mils is enough to do a lot of damage this is also DC which is another problem because AC will tend to throw you off if you touch it DC because it's uh, you know, just one just positive and negative it's not swinging negative and positive like AC is because AC when you touch it it tends to make your muscles contract and uh, expand oh well, so you you tend to get like, like a, a violent shaking um, but DC if you're gripping something tight and you touch it you won't be able to let go right now I've just got to do this with dad hang on um, there you go sort that out uh, I think I uh, did that work for you David I've just added you as a moderator because I said I would I'm not sure if I hit the right button hang on let me try again didn't seem to go through yes it did right so and that's that's basically why these things are damn dangerous look we're still at 240 volts and how long has it been <laughs> and that's still enough to do a lot of damage um, the reason why it can do a lot of damage is because it's stored energy and it can discharge in a, an awful lot of uh, a, a, a lot of current can pass so the, the I can't remember exactly what the actual rating in joules would be but it's enough to seriously hurt and when you're working on these things for that reason this is why you need to respect these things it really is um, the first thing I always do is to actually make sure these caps are discharged now as I say I am we are creeping down now to about 194 volts I don't know how long that's been but it's still a fair old while and you can probably see the 5 volt rail is still active um, you can see the little LED there which is on my test rig so I'll wait till that goes down a bit more or if you're fed up what I'll tell you, I thought I'd do, I'll charge it again and I'll show you how you can discharge it. Right, okay. Right, the 300 volts again. And what I got here is a little thing I made up. All it is is a 10 kilo ohm 2 watt resistor and it's in well insulated through some 500 volt cable with some uh, pretty poor test probes, but I know what I'm doing. If, if you really want at least 500 volt protection uh, from this what I'm going to do instead of going down on the board I'm just going to pop straight across the meter it's the same thing okay we're in there now if you watch it you can see how quick this will go down and that's the safe way of discharging a cap there we go 3 volt so that is now quite safe 
Now, the other funny little fact that can happen is when you take off these things, you see it start waking up again. We're now back up to one bolt. It, this commonly happens when you've got two capacitors in parallel. Um, but it, it won't creep up to anything that's going to cause you any serious danger. So, there we go. A 10k 2 watt resistor is all you need. Now, the other thing I was going to show you is, so, is the I shall be making these up. Um, it's for little. Well, I did do a little bit the other week. It's a means of testing these power supplies. I've just got to get a, a few more bits sorted. Um, it will work with all of them. Um, basically, what we've got is a trigger circuit. What I'm going to do is power this up again. Just make sure nothing's in a dangerous place. <sighs> okay, so we're on. And we've got our blue light. I don't know if you can see that or not. They don't show up LEDs, do they? Oh, I'm sure you can see that as a, as a blue LED. And what we do, we send an artificial on signal, like so. And you can see all I've got on here at the moment is a 12 volt LED. Not ideal because it doesn't draw enough current, but my other load unfortunately <laughs> broke. Ideally, something like a 20 30 watt halogen lamp's best, so it'll draw a bit of current. Um, once that's triggered, I don't know if you can see the board here. Let me see if I can get um, over to the overhead. You've got blue LED. Um, oh, it'll go out now because I'll pull the lead off. There we go. And you also get a red one come on acknowledging that uh, the 12 watts come up it's a bit hard to see just there i put my finger there it's there so let go and off it goes and then we're back up we still got a 390 because it is powered and one thing you must never do is try and discharge a cap when it's powered on because that uh, is a hiding into nothing that seriously would hurt oh, i can't get the plug out Right, there we go. So plugs out. I will now go back to discharging the thing again. So we're safe. So I'll get me little prods. I'm only going across it on the meter here because it's safer than trying to put the fingers in there with the clips on it as well. So it doesn't matter which way round I go with the this because it's only a resistor. It's passive. So and down it comes. There we go. So we're back to being safe. And that's really about it. If, the, if you've got anything you want to ask, just ask. I'm only doing this as a very quick video for, for David. Um, if you can give us any likes, I'd appreciate it. Uh, I know there's not many here, but uh, I didn't know I was going to do this tonight. Uh, just having a little read. So you can say hi to all. Hi Chris, I'll see you there. Jaden, hi mate. Uh, I think that's about it, isn't it? Jaden, yeah. Is there anything I can tell you? Or uh, are you all pretty happy with that? Dad fix multimeter. What are you on about? Let me just. <sighs> right. So you can discharge it through the multimeter. No, you can't through the multimeter. Uh, he will show you soon, Jane. Jaden, what I've actually got, I'm using the multimeter just so you can see it. The multimeter won't discharge it. Um, the reason why I can do it on here is because I can push a probe. I just move the camera a bit into the back of the two leads here, but go down to the actual capacitors. So they're actually reading the capacitors. And what I'm doing to discharge it is actually putting a 10k resistor, which is this, on two probes here. If I can get them in the right view. There we go. Um, I'm just putting them across the, the same connections here. I, you know, normally you wouldn't have a meter connected across it. Um, when... When you check this, so if you're doing anything with these, 
uh, assumably if it comes on or hasn't blown the fuses and you, you don't know what's going on always check if you're going to check it check it in in its case first um, so that you know you're hang on a minute yeah Tea, yeah, I'm on live at the minute. No, I ain't talking that one. All right, sweetie. Uh, so basically, first thing to do if you're going to check it is check it while it's still in its case. Make sure that um, it's, you know, pretty safe. If you've had it plugged in, it's going to be charged up. So the safest thing to do would be unplug it and just leave it for about half an hour. Because trying to get these apart, is when you can accidentally put your fingers across the wrong point. If it is a part, then basically to discharge these caps, I'll try and take these crop clips off so you know, just make sure we ain't charged. On this one, you've actually got two capacitors in parallel. Let me go on to the overhead. You've got these two caps here, and they're actually connected together. So the positive to positive, and negative to negative. If you're in a situation like this and you you want to check it, then by all means, just put your make sure that your probes on your meter are like 500 to 1,000 volt rating like these. So if I was going to do it as a as a test, I set this meter up. Hang on, um, let me just charge this thing up again now. Uh, we're on. Okay. Right, so let's get a meter uh, so you can see it. Uh, where can I put it in the view? About there somewhere. Right, so if this had been something I got on the bench and I'm checking it and it was dead, I turned it off. What I would do then is read across the capacitor. And as you can see, I've got 317 volts. But this is where you've got to be very careful, you don't slip. These are not ideal, these probes for this, because there's too much metal sticking out. Ideally, probes like these are far safer. Now, now what I would do to discharge it is I use the two probes I've got with this resistive load here. So I'm just waiting for it to come in view there. And what you do, you go across the capacitors like you would where the meter was. The only reason I did it from the meter is because you can see that the actual uh, caps are being discharged. So I'm going to hold this on probably for about 10 15 seconds, like so. I think that would be enough. What I will do eventually is probably put some kind of an LED monitor into this so that you can see when the actual caps or power supply is discharged. Right, so now if I go and check it, we're down to three volts, so we're quite safe. So that's basically how to, to make it reasonably safe. But there's always an exception. You see, supposing these two capacitors, say there was a fault, and it blew the connection between the two. Um, now, yeah, admittedly, that means only one would get charged up, but if it happens, say, while you're working on it, and you discharge across the one, it could be that the other one is still charged. So, to be honest, it is prudent to actually check them individually. I should have said that, but uh, the likelihood of it is on you. I mean, uh, that one is still only four volts this should be about the same yeah it's basically just crept up to about four volt which is not unusual five volt it'll, it'll probably wander up a little bit from other capacitors discharging back through the circuit that's about it so hi Philip hope you're looking fine um, with them two caps in, no, not in series, Chris, they're in parallel. In series, it's a totally different situation. Uh, should be able to negative on one positive. Yeah, they're not in series, Chris. They're actually positive to positive, negative to negative. Um, and what that does, anything, like capacitors in parallel, 
if you got two of these, so you got a hundred and a one hundred and fifty, that means the total capacity there is two hundred and fifty microfarads, um, and the voltage rating is still only one hundred uh, four hundred and fifty volts. What we do sometimes with amplifiers when we're playing with voltages of up to seven to eight hundred volts, we sometimes put capacitors in series. And what happens then is a slightly different thing. If we put the, if you say, I won't use these because of different values, but just say we put two um, 100 microfarad capacitors in series, the overall capacity would only be 50 microfarads, it'd halve it. But the voltage rating would be double or the sum of the two capacitors. Normally you'd use the same voltage rate. So if you've got two capacitors of say uh, 100 microfarad at 500 volts, in series you'd have a capacitance of 50 microfarads but a working voltage of 1000. Now the same capacitors in parallel, you'd, you'd basically have a total capacitance of 100 microfarad but the working voltage would stay the same, it'd be only 500. That's um, part of uh, part of the theory of uh, not relativity, but Sod's law. Um, yeah, I see what you're saying there. It uh, the trouble is because they're in parallel. If you short one out, you short you short them out both out. I mean. For room, because they are in parallel, it does make it easier to, I mean, that's what I did when I put the clips on, if you noticed earlier on. I'd actually put the negative or the positive on one cap, uh, the other way around, sorry, I'd put the negative on one cap here and the positive on the cap over here. So there was more room to manoeuvre, as to say. Uh, that, that's common practice, yeah, it's safe practice. This is very confusing for me. What's confusing, Jaden? Um, when you get into electronics, it, basics, it can be a little bit confusing. Um, like I was trying to explain to David last night, to know a little bit can be, uh, it can help. With digital electronics, it's a total different game to what it is with AC theory. So when you're working with all sort of uh, analog devices, it's a whole different ball game. Digital is not too bad. You just need to know a few basic bits. Like probably Ohm's law is a good thing to learn, um, and just a little bit about what capacitors do. Uh, if you're going to learn to work with power supplies, you definitely will need to know that. Um, you also need to know how these transformers work and how the FETs work. Switching power supply is totally different from what they call a linear power supply. Um, linear has a big transformer in it and basically it's, it weighs about three tons and is very inefficient but for doing work with like bench power supplies all mine are linear and for that reason um, a lot better for doing work like uh, injecting voltages and things like that. A lot of switch mode power supplies won't let you do that. That's a linear supply. This is the Rigol. Um, this is my high voltage unit. You've got uh, one range which is 20 volt or 0 to 20 volt and 0 to 10 amp. Or uh, you can have um, 40 volt, 0 to 40, but 5 amp. Again, that's Ohm's law for you. You double the one, you halve the other. This one over here is uh, one I use for doing um, voltages like when we're doing um, cores, you know, with, with APUs and stuff. You've got three separate power supplies. Two of them are only up to 6 volt, um, but they're up to about 10 amp each. Um, very stable, and these are the ones you sort of use to set core voltages up with and things like that. And the, amp, the other one here is lower current, it's only about 2 amp, but it goes up to 25 volt. Um, the other thing with digital work is like this meter, it's, it's a, what they call a four wire system. 
So if I'm reading sort of or looking for faults on a, uh, a board, say, with shorts, let me just get his power supply out right for a second. I know it's discharged, otherwise I wouldn't pick it up. <laughs> Let's just do that way. When you're reading on boards, you, you read things and you read these very, very low impedances. And the difference between 38 ohms and 38.3 ohms can be the difference between something working or not. And most meters won't let you read it. This is why I track myself to this key site. What you've got, let me just sort this mess out. You've got what I call a four wire system. Um, what it does, it senses as well. So it means that it checks the leads, the impedance of your leads. And if I click that in and we go to four wire, shift four wire, you see up here it says four wire resistance. What that basically does, I've got just two probes, but you've got the four leads. And what this does, it lowers the impedance of the probes right down so that um, they don't influence what you're reading on the board. So reading really low ohm resistors is, is quite easy. Um, let me just grab this board again. Uh, as you know, you've got that point uh, 0.16 or 0.6 ohm or something on here. Let's see what this makes of it. And I'll check it then with a standard meter. Right. So it's actually, oh hang on, I haven't calibrated the meter. Let's put those two together. Uh, no. Okay. No. Hang on, let me just move these so I've got a bit more probe. That's better. Right, let's see if that it possibly might be a problem if we're reading this in circuit because it is a power supply and we're going to get supply come back up the cap uh, resistor from the cap you see if you watch it creep you know, just check it the other way around make sure no other devices are influencing the resistance as you can see we're getting 0 0.8 of an ohm in both directions so always check anything in both directions for the simple reason when you read anything in circuit if you've got some like a diode across it it will influence the reading in one direction only because a diode reads in one direction only when you're checking for impedances it's good to use just ohms not diode mode because the diode mode puts out the voltage which can actually cause issues um, let me just grab another power supply. This is um, one I've just prepared. This is a Bosch power supply from Bosch Drill um, for charging the batteries. Uh, this one went out of the splat and um, paired it all, plugged it in, <laughs> it blew up again. And uh, that, was, that was me. I should have checked things. On here, we've got some quite low resistors, so I'll just see what they read on here. So we've got should be a 30 or 3.3 ohm I think we should get 3.3 exactly if we don't it's because I got to calibrate and leave. yeah it didn't calibrate let me do this again I'm still getting used to setting this thing up it's because I had the other leads on um, you've got to calibrate it for the leads you put on it when you turn it on that's why it's like a computer this thing, it takes ages to boot up. Come on. Okay, alright. Let's 
So it should have sensed the uh, four wire motor on its own, which it didn't. Uh, okay, let's see what we get this time. It could be me just doing it wrong, as I say, I'm still getting my head around this bloody meter. There we go, 3.3. That's exactly what it is, that was this, the 3.3. The thing is, this will read that down to four places. Now, this one here is a 30 ohm. This is another resistor that blew up. Um, it's reading at 29.9131. When you're dealing with voltages, especially in injecting, it's very critical because um, when you're injecting a voltage in a rail, I, I did mention this to somebody the other day, if it's a 5 volt rail and you inject 1 volt, then even if you've got it set at 6 amps, you still possibly would not find anything getting hot. Because 1 volt or 6 amps is only 6 watts. Now, if you injected, it, like I said, if it was the 5 volt rail, you really should inject the 5 volt. 5 volt or 6 amps is 30 watts. So if there is a short, you'll see it. But it's always good to start slightly low on the, you know, on the side of caution. But the thing is, it does make that amount of difference. So bear that in mind. Right, is there anything else I can do tonight, guys, for you? Very confusing for you still, Jaden. I was at the same comment. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. Well that's about it then really um this is anything you want to know i'm going off and look after my good lady she had a bad accident for a monday night and uh, she's got a broken eye socket which is not nice and i didn't hit her i promise okay well i assume nobody's got any questions so i'll leave that one with you Thanks for uh, logging in, I appreciate it, and uh, I'll catch on uh, the next one. I've got a lot of stuff to do, but I've still got to put all the cameras up, so uh, I shall get round to it, hopefully in the next couple of days, and uh, we'll get some work done. So, okay guys.